After the brilliance of Tuesday, we moved on to Festival Wednesday at the Cheltenham Festival, starting off with the Ballymore at 1.30 before the Brown Advisory Novices Chase at 2.10. The big one of the day, the Betway Queen Mother Champion Chase off at 3.30. The Glen Farkless Cross Country also on the card. They're off, away for the Ballymore. The first race on day number two, Champ Kylie is the first of them to have the advantage, a handy little lead already, about three lengths ahead to Hermes Allen as they get over flight number one of 10. The maroon jacket of Master Chewy was the back marker. A red cap for American Mike is sharing third place with Impere Pass in the two shades of green. And then the good land in a yellow jacket as they jump two. Uh, pink colours of Gaelic Warrior is next, ahead of the grey horse, which is Marble Sands. Then the white cap of Ho My Lord, he won the best turned out award before the race. Uh, Master Chewy is next, and Persian Time is with him, just at the rear of the field as they make the turn out of the centre of the course. Uh, there'll be a good 12 lengths first to last here, uh, with about a two length advantage. Danny Mullins on Champ Kylie leading. From Harry Cobden, Hermes Allen running in second place. Davy Russell is next. Green and white jacket, a red cap on American Mike. He's uh, one off the running rails. Next to him is Paul Townend in two shades of green on Impere Pass. Uh, behind those, they come now towards flight number three. The yellow jacket, Michael O'Sullivan on good land, leading rider for the meeting so far on two. Behind these is Gaelic Warrior in the pink colours as they clear the third. And then the white cap is Mark Walsh on Ho oh My Lord. The dark blue and pink colours, Paddy Brennan on Marble Sands. Behind those, maroon and white jacket, Sam Tristan Davis on Master Chewy. Adrian Heskin, blue and white jacket, maroon sleeves, maroon cap on Persian time continues to be the back marker. It's a long run before flights, uh, flight number four. And there's still a fair long or so from it. No change in the order. And a good 12, 15 lengths first to last year. So quite well strung out in this Ballymore Novices hurdle as Champ Kylie moves on towards number four. Just over length head, immediately slipstreamed by the fancied runner Hermes Allen in second. And then comes American Mike. Imperi passes behind those. Uh, two lengths behind, take that in fourth position as they swing left-handed, then a circuit to go. Good land in the yellow is next to Gaelic Warrior, and then comes home my lord in the yellow hoops, about three off the running rail. Uh, they're followed by Master Chewy against the rail, in company with him is Marble Sands, and then Persian Time continues to be the back marker. So left-handed, away towards the far side, six more flights of hurdles to take. And Champ Kylie, Danny Mullins have been allowed to sit in front here, dictating the pace they want. They have a two-length lead. Hermes Allen is running in second position. American Mike and Impere Pass maybe just getting closer to this leading pair in third and fourth places. Uh, behind those is Good Land uh, with Gaelic Warrior as they come then to flight number five. American Mike may be a little bit slower than some of his rivals. The back marker continues to be Persian time. Ho oh, My Lord lost a few places jumping that one. He's regained them now. He's going past Marble Sands and Master Chewy at the rear of the field. Hermes Allen is beginning to draw level with Champ Kylie as they come towards this next flight of hurdles. There'll be about a length and a half behind those two. Impere Pass and the red cap of American Mike, who are together in third and fourth. And maybe two lengths behind those to Gaelic Warrior in company with a yellow jacket of good land. Ho oh, My Lord is next. And then a length further back to Marble Sands around the outside of Master Chewy. Persian time is a length and a half behind those. So right up to the top of the hill they go. Four more to jump from here at the fourth last, and Hermes Allen jumps through to a very slender lead over Champ Keeley in second position. There's a better neck between them. Impere passes a length and a half, maybe two behind him in third. Uh, then comes Good Land in the yellow, coming up on the inside of American Mike. Behind these is Gaelic Warrior, and then comes Home My Lord. They're followed 
uh, by the grey, which is Marble Sands, then Master Chewy as they freewheel down to three out. Persian time is the back marker. So it's Champ Kylie, Hermes Allen, uh, we're right in behind him in Pere Pass. Good land is there. Gaelic Warrior trying to make progress. American Mike is right in behind those. On the extreme left is Master Chewy trying to make progress as well as they move down towards the second last. Champ Kylie to Hermes Allen. In Pere Pass, in the green, in the yellow, good land. They're both poised in third and fourth places as they jump the second last. Champ Kylie is still battling on in front here with the lead. In Pere Pass has got a lovely split against the running well there as they swing into the straight and now Paul Tarnand on Impere Pass has taken it up. Cham Kali in second position, Gaelic Warrior behind those. They're followed by Good Land as they move down towards the last flight. Impere Pass will come to the tenth and last with a four or five length advantage. And it now pings it, got away from it well. Second position, the pink of Gaelic Warrior joined Cham Kiley behind those Good Land, but it's Impere Pass is going to remain unbeaten. He strides to the line for victory in the Ballymore with Paul Turnhamt. Gaelic Warrior second, Champ Kiley in third, good land behind those, and maybe in fifth position, Hermes Allen to Marble Sands. Irish domination, Willie Mullins domination, and Pere Pass 5 to 2, leading home a 1 2 3 from Close Sutton. Gaelic Warrior 9 to 2 was second, Champ Kiley 13 to 2 was in third, and after El Fabiolo on day one, Simon Manier and Isaac Swade, the owners can dream yet further courtesy of Empere Pass, had that dream opening up the inside, but whether it had been inside, middle or outside, he would have still won. Such was his domination. The buzz was very much about this horse in the build-up to the festival, and you can believe the hype, he's a star. And Simon is just watching Empere Pass win the Ballymore, destroy the Ballymore. That was silky, wasn't it? That was. I mean, we really, uh, literally... Uh, I'm in shock, really. <laughs> were you not expecting that? Well, we were, we're, he'd been working very, very well, and um, he wanted to race in Ireland well, but he was going up in distance, the ground, another question mark. So um, to win my six and a half lengths on his fourth, fourth run is... It's breathtaking. <laughs> and very exciting. Very exciting, very exciting indeed, yeah. And the vibes from Clos Sutton from Willie Mullins' team have been very strong about this horse. They have been, Lydia, but there again, it was quite a deep race. I mean, Champ Kylie, Gaelic Warrior, there are lots of very horses with, with, you know, great form lines. Hermes Allen from England. So, I mean, it was competitive. I mean, Willie was right to go for the Ballymore and not the Supreme. What do you think this horse can be? What do, you, what do you see him as? Well, he's really a blank canvas. I mean, that's the fourth run of his life. Um, he was extended today, but he's won by six and a half lengths. Came over the last um, in the lead. And so, really, the sky's the limit at the moment. Got to keep, keep the dream. The dream's very much alive. Very much so. And his jumping is, is superb. He is. He's very, very slick. Very slick. Great week for you with El Fabiolo yesterday. Yep, so far, but it's a long week and um, fingers crossed that things well go well. Well, very best of luck for the rest of the week and many congratulations. Thank here. you very much. Thank Thanks. You. Thank, Thank you. you. Three winners on the board now for Willie Mullins and the one, two, three in the Ballymore for good measure. That was silky from Empire Pass. It was. It was. Um, I was very impressed. Anyhow, when you know, I was looking at him coming to the last bend, thinking, "Now, Danny, don't pull in." But Danny's horse was hanging right the whole way down the back, and Paul just said to himself. Uh, it, he'll get through, and he did. But what happened when he got through was what blew me away. Uh, the, the change of pace down to the last and up the hill. Wow, you know we. I think was well, that the horse's fourth run, I think, in his life. So there's huge improvement there. There's he can. I mean, I'm looking at him as a chaser. You you have to ask yourself now: Would you stay hurdling? You know, what would you do? Well, you slightly surprised me. You. Oh, well, I, I slightly surprised me. I thought you were going to say champion hurdle after a performance like that. Well, well that, you know, that you, you sort of have to look at all those things. And um, yesterday I was telling Michael Buckley, I said, we're going to have to go off and shop again to buy one to beat you. You know, maybe we have one here. <laughs> he, he looks very decent and his jumping yeah. is great. Yeah, you know, he's in the same sort of mould with his speed jumping and the speed he came up the hill. So, you know, maybe we have one. And how about the second and the third Gaelic Warrior and Champ Kiley? Gaelic Warrior, uh, he took out his earplugs on the way to the start, didn't settle as well as Patrick wanted him to. But Patrick said, came in, he said he, he could go up to three miles, so he's a good, strong chaser down the line. And Champ Kiley surprised me 
uh, by staying on so well. Um, even, you know, Danny said he hung terribly down the back. I don't know why he did that. Danny doesn't know either. We'll see if there's some little problem. Uh, but he's another one that'll make a nice chaser. Are you on good terms with yourself with three on the board so far? Yes, yeah. yeah I mean, you have to be. I mean, you know, any day you get a winner here is a good day. So. Small matter of five now in the brand advisory. Are you leaning a particular way? Uh, not really, no. I'm just hoping that they get around safe. And um, uh, I suppose um, Sir Gerhard probably has the, the class. He's been here twice, he's won twice. A clear round, which could, might be difficult for a horse with his lack of experience, but uh, uh, to, he, he's the one you'd have to pick anyhow. Yeah. Yeah, I was expecting to say that. Well, very best of luck with all of them and congratulations here. Thanks very much. Cheers. Thank you. Race two, the Brown Advisory Novices Chase, a grade one over three miles, and Jerry Colom for many, the banker of the day, five to four. They're off. They raced away just over two circuits they have in the Brown Advisory Novices Chase, and Bron in the green, and the real wacker with a noseband going to be the two uh, that land in first and second places at fence number one. In total, uh, they'll have 19 on the way round to jump. So Gerhard was just the back marker, the favourite, Jerry Colomb, who's also won the Best Turned Out Award. He has settled in fourth position in the early strides, a very pale jacket with black sleeves. Here they come then to number two, the real wacker. A uh, little slow into it, and the green of Braun, who led him in the very early strides, comes alongside, but the real wacker goes on to take an advantage again. Gallia de Lito, she runs in company with Jerry Colomb, and Ramelis a length and a half behind these two, I am Maximus. A dark jacket and white cap of Time Hill is next as they come to number three. Uh, behind those is Thunder Rock in company with Adamantly Chosen and Sir Gerhard continues to be uh, towards the rear of the field. Four is the water jump for the first time and the white and red of the real wacker up and over that in front narrowly to the green colours of Bron as they run to the first of the open ditches, number five coming up. Yellow sleeves, Gallia de Lito and the black sleeves of Jerry Colomb behind those in third and fourth places. Little gap, couple of lengths away. Time Hill is fourth festival this afternoon. Three places so far. Uh, runs in company with the grey Ramelies as they take this next plane fence running up the hill. I am Maximus is next. Uh, then the red with the white sleeves, Thunder Rock. Adamantly Chosen is next. So Gerhard maybe a little slower than some of his rivals with the blue cap at the rear there. To the top of the hill, another open ditch, fence number seven. The real wacker, he touches down about a length ahead. Bron in second place. Jerry Colomb, a length and a half behind those, very narrowly in third. Then comes Gallia de Lito, the grey. Ramelis, now the matter, Sean O'Keefe, running in fifth position. I am Maximus, black and pink jacket right against the running rail. Time here, a little wider of those. Uh, they're followed by Thunder Rock. Behind Thunder Rock, Sir Gerhard and Adamantly Chosen are the last couple of runners. They're on their way to home for the first time and moving downhill towards fence number eight in this brand advice. It'll be about 10, 12 lengths first to last. The white and red jacket of the real wacker. Sam Tristan Davis continues to have the advantage, only very narrowly. Daryl Jacob in green colours on Braun has been very close to him the whole way round as they approach the home turn for the first time. Then the unbeaten Jerry Colomb, Jordan Gainford, the pale jacket, pink and white, black sleeves, black uh, cap. He's the favourite running in a share of third place with Gallia de Lito, the one mare in the lineup, yellow sleeves for Harry Skelton, fourth and fifth. The grey horse Ramley, Sean O'Keefe is next. Then Time Hill, purple and green jacket, a white cap. Michal Nolan on the extreme right is I am Maximus in the black and pink as they take the first of two in the straight on this circuit. Uh, nearest to us, adamantly chosen Brian Hayes in the green and yellow jacket as they come to this next plane fence, uh, which is number 10. They've got circuit to go now. The last few runners, Thunder Rock, Adrian Heskin, a red jacket, white uh, sleeve. Sir Gerhard, Paul Townend, red and white jacket and blue cap continues to be at the rear. Heading to number 11, still 10, 12 lengths between them. 
the real wacker de Bron, Jerry Colomb and Gallia de Lito. That's the leading quartet. Uh, behind those, a couple of lengths uh, gap then to Time Hill round the outside of Ramillies. Adamantly chosen in green and yellow, trying to make a bit of progress. I am Maximus is next, and then Sir Gerhard, who has just moved ahead of Thunder Rock to relegate him to be the back marker. Here's number 12, and the real wacker. Got over it in front. Little nod from Time Hill in sixth position, heading to the 14th, uh, the 13th now, the water jump. Braun in second. Gallia de Lito and Jerry Colomb, third and fourth places. Adamantly chosen, yellow and green, making headway. Got into fifth. Ramillies and Time Hill, the next pair to Thunder Rock. I am Maximus and Sir Gerhard at the rear. They come now to 14. Third of the ditches. The real Wacker continues to bowl along in front. Braun is not far behind him. Jerry Colomb is a little long at that in fourth position. Gallia de Lito is ahead of him. She's gone on to third place and closing on the leaders. Another plain fence they come to now. Adamantly chosen behind those. Sir Gerhard trying to make some progress now. White-faced runner, red jacket, blue cap on the inside of Time Hill. Final open ditch coming up. This is four from the finish. I am Maximus Thunderrock and Ramley's the last trio. Four from the finish. The real Wacker continues to have the advantage. Stood off that well, got over it nicely. Braun has been joined by Gallia de Lito. She's been creeping into it with Harry Skelton. They're level with Braun now, second and third places. A length behind those to Jerry Colomb. Sir Gerhard has now moved through into fifth place. He's on the inside of Adamantly Chosen. Ramillies is behind these and then Thunder Rock and Time Hill. And I am Maximus at the rear of the field. Three to go, they're on their way to the winning line. The real Wacker and Braun continue to be the leading pair. Gallia de Lito is there. Then Jerry Colomb creeping closer. Sir Gerhard, red and white jacket, a blue cap as they jump the third last fence. Behind those adamantly chosen. Heading towards the home turn. There's only two to jump here. Braun and the real Wacker continue to be the leading pair. Gallia de De Lito is behind those in third place. Jerry Colomb is next. Two lengths behind those to Sir Gerhard. Adamantly chosen and Thunder Rock are running on. This is the home turn. And in the green colours, Braun, the white and red jacket, the real Wacker. Into third is Jerry Colomb and then Sir Gerhard as they jump two out. Still, the white and red, the real Wacker and Sam Diston Davis. Braun and Daryl Jacob, the challengers at the last. Just the real Wacker to Braun. Jerry Colomb is in third place. He three lengths to find. It's still the real Wacker. He's out in front here, leading by two lengths. Jerry Colomb is getting a spurt on him. The closing stage is here. He comes. The real Wacker in front. Jerry Colomb is closing with every stride. They hit the line. The real Wacker and Jerry Colomb. The judge will have to tell you that. Braun was next. I am Maximus and Gallia Delito behind those. And the judge confirmed it was the real Wacker, a fairy tale story, eight to one. Congratulations to the connections and trained by Patrick Neville. Sam Twiston Davis back into the winner's enclosure at Cheltenham. Jerry Colomb just failed five to four favourite. Bron, 50 to one, running a stormer who was the least fancied of those out of close Sutton. But a brilliant, bold, front-running uh, display of real accurate jumping in the main from the real Wacker to continue his love affair from Cheltenham or with the famous Presbury Park venue. Jerry Colomb, a few sketchy jumps, just had him on the back foot. He got flying towards the line but just failed. Sam Tristan Davis is just taking off the colours of the real Wacker, on whom he's just won the brown advisory. Many congratulations. What was that like? Yeah, um, amazing. I'm 30 now, but it's still a dream, like almost a dream, you know, because it's a long time since the last one was Solar Impulse to Paul in the Grand Annual. So. Was it really? Yeah, and it's just so you're saying there's so many good lads. It's hard to get rides here, let alone ones with a good chance. So obviously absolutely blessed. Couldn't believe the rhythm I got into. And then you're on the front end and you've been watching a lot of the races this week. And they've been coming to, from mid to back and then you're thinking oh I'm going to get chinned and you go through a lot of emotions in a race and that's from someone that can keep it uh, fairly under control so um, <laughs> yeah just absolutely delighted to ski to the door. He, his jumping is just so good isn't it? Incredibly neat I think his biggest asset is some horses find it quite hard to get in tight and then get up and what he is is incredibly accurate he wastes no time in doing so and then when you do need him he's plenty of scope as well as he's kind of shown over the last three four so just a tremendous effort great training performance by Paddy and said he was in brilliant nick. I hadn't sat on him since the dipper. Didn't really know I was going to ride him again till, till last week. So just incredible.
incredibly, incredibly, incredibly blessed, really. And what were you thinking from the last of the line? Did that take an age in your mind? Very long way. I was just thinking, I'd appreciate it if you could please just go in a straight line, just to make my life a little bit easier. Because <laughs> the way I ride, um, legs everywhere and can get the odd wobble on it. So I was just like, you just go in a straight line. But thankfully, he did really well. And obviously, he's picked up all the way to the line and was very honest. And it is hard to go and make all around here, especially against some of the opposition, but just a fantastic performance. Paddy thinks of him as a Gold Cup horse. He had him in the Gold Cup until a very late stage. Do you think that will suit him? I hope so. <laughs> Honestly, it's the only second time I've sat in my life. Paddy told me he'd win the Dipper, said he'd win today. If he says he's going to win the Gold Cup, then I hope I can be on board. <laughs> <laughs> well, I hope so too. It's great to see you back in the winner's enclosure, Sam. Many congratulations. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> Paddy Neville has just turned his first Cheltenham Festival winner with the real whacker in the Brown Advisory, the horse that he's won twice before here with at Cheltenham. Many, many congratulations. I yep. bet that weight from the last of the line was agony was, for you. Yeah, it was, but he, he toughed it out. In fairness, he's, he's, a, he's a lovely horse. He's a superb horse. His he jumping, he got jumping. In another, another lovely rhythm. He did, yeah. He did. Unbelievable. So the ground was a little bit soft for him. We were just dreading that, but it worked out. So, brilliant. What, what were you thinking on the way round? I was happy. I was happy with his rhythm, the way he was jumping. And Sam kept him out a little bit from the nicer ground, so we kind of made that plan there earlier on today. So, we, it worked. And, and you'd brought him here to, the, to Cheltenham to get him the experience of the course, and that obviously stood him in good stead. Yeah, definitely sure. He's won three times now here. Yeah. So, I don't think I'll run him anywhere else. <laughs> Yeah, keep her in the best oh, company. Keep, yeah, that's it. Yeah. And this is your first season with a licence here in Britain, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. And you were yeah. previously with Anne Duffield? Yeah, I was assistant to Anne there for, for a year and a half and we had a couple of nice winners. So it worked out. It's working out great, yeah. This was like, one of them, wasn't he, in the River Don? Uh, so, yeah, so, he, won, he was in, the, he won, uh, in Carlisle, yes. won a maiden. And then so. second in the River Don, yeah. yeah. So he was always a good horse, so... And you trained previously in Ireland, is that right? Sorry? You trained previously? I did, yeah. Here. I had about 15 yeah. years. Yeah. yeah. Good winners as well, so the last couple of years was getting tough. So why did you why did you make the move? I couldn't get any owners in Ireland. Just just couldn't get them. It was tough enough, so hopefully it'll work away here. Well, it seems to be going yeah. well, I'd say, yeah. wouldn't you? I'd say, yeah. <laughs> Brilliant, yeah. And Delighted. what do you see this horse as in the future now? I sure will. We'll mind it for next year. We'll come back here for the Gold Cup, hopefully. That's the plan, and I'll well, had keep him in one piece. You had him in the Gold Cup until a very late stage, and you were seriously yeah. toying with it, weren't you? I was, you? yeah. I was. Uh, yeah, and we probably made the right decision just for, for the horse. He's only ran six times, so just give him that bit of experience, and we'll come back next year. We'll mind him now and give him a good summer. We might have enough now for this year. We'll see. Okay. See how he comes out of this, and we'll, we might go to Punchestown. Oh, no, that would be Probably good, maybe in the autumn. Really? Yeah, one of my favourite tracks, Lee Stone. Okay. So. okay. Well, it says it says the regard that you hold him in. It's it's a great story. Representing the North here as well. That's right, yeah, delighted. Yeah. Delighted. We've got great support and from everyone. So. Well, it's, it's, it's it, it is absolutely yeah. brilliant. Many congratulations, yeah. Paddy. Well much. done. Thanks. Thank you. Another Irish bred Cheltenham Festival winner. Contact Irish Thoroughbred Marketing to find yours. First of the handicaps on Wednesday was the Coral Cup, two miles and five, and strong sport uh, for Safira, who went off at 13 to two. They're off. A race away for the Coral Cup and a Red Risk uh, heads down to the first in company with Rian, Good Risk, Good All and Scaramanga. And we lose one right at the back of the field there as well, which is Elvis Mail. 26 Elvis Mail uh, goes at flight number one. Watch House Cross in the black and yellow coming through into a prominent position with Rian as they get to number two. Camprond and Red Risk, Good Risk, Good All and Epic Song, Scaramanga, Bold Endeavour, HMS Seahorse, San Salvador and Fedor in prominent positions. Uh, behind these is Captain Conby, blue and yellow jacket with Grand Roy. And then comes the distinguishing white cap Safareur, a red and white jacket towards the inside of them. Uh, these then are followed as they race out of the back straight by Langer Dan. And with those as well is Beacon Edge up towards the outside. At the moment, the very man, tax for Max, run for Oscar. These are the back markers. Also with an 
turn towards the rear is Iker Allen as they turn into the straight, approaching number three. And watch how it's crossing the black and yellows, pulling his way through to a three or four length advantage now. Rian and Campron will be together in second and third places. Scaramanga on the extreme left with the yellow sleeves. A light blue jacket of red risk uh, is behind these. An epic song and Fedor together to San Salvador and HMS Seahorse and Nelson and Bold Endeavour and Grand Warren with those Langer Dam. Uh, these just uh, preceded by Captain Combi as they make the long run down towards number four. Benson is over towards the inner of the course in a black and pink jacket. Safira's right in behind him, then Tax for Max and uh, with Tax for Max in the same jacket is Call Me Lord. Further out is uh, on the outside Beacon Edge in company with Grand Warren. The very man's behind these. E. K. Allen in company with Sporting John towards the back of the field as also is run for Oscar. This is number four. Watch how it's crossing the black and yellow. Lands over that in front. Uh, they all get over that okay. Second position just about is R Rian in the green and white jacket towards the inside. Campron, the white cap for Aidan Coleman on the outside of those as the loose Elvis male goes past the winning post. Unfortunately, no rider and it's a lap too soon. Scaramanga's right in behind the leading group and there is Red Risk and then comes San Salvador and HMS Seahorse and Epic Song and Captain Combi. Good Risk at all is right in behind those. Then Fedor who races just ahead of uh, Safferer as they move then on towards number five. Uh, Beacon Edge and Langadan are in mid-division. Bold Endeavour right up round the outside of runners. Uh, these then are followed through uh, by Sporting John as they get over five. Run for Oscar just about the last one over it. Tax for Max is towards the back of the field also. So about halfway now in this Coral Cup. And Watch House Cross and Rachel Blackmore still leading. Aidan Coleman and Cambron has taken second place. Red Risk and Harry Cobb done a light blue jacket is next. Check jacket of Scaramanga races round the outside of Rian. An epic song, a dark jacket, a red cap took that in sixth position. The blue and yellow of Captain Combi is next. And Nelson, a red jacket with stripes on the sleeves, is just in behind those. They're followed by San Salvador in the light blue colours. And then trying to make a little bit of progress is Benson and also off your rockers not far behind the leaders good risk at all white and dark blue up round the outside as they race up towards the top of the hill now and watching them all towards the rear get over that okay sporting john the best turned out when is the back mark he's struggling a little bit at the moment call me lord is also towards the back of the field they're at the top of the hill they've got three to jump from here and it's still watch house cross who has a very narrow lead over camprond in second nelson scaramanga Red Risk and Rian right in behind these. Good Risk at all, making good progress on the outside. San Salvador, Captain Combi in the roll blue and yellow right in the centre, comes into it stylishly. An epic song is behind that as they jump the third last flight of hurdles. The leaders get over it OK. And Campron with his white face comes alongside Watch House Cross. Scaramanga, Nelson, Captain Combi, Langadan, Red Risk behind these. An epic song trying to get into it as well. Two from the finish now. And as they jump the second last, it's just Campron. But the blue and yellow of Captain Combi and Keith Donahue coming into it strongly. Scaramanga's there. Nelson behind these. Langer down. An epic song. Good risk at all. Then comes off your rocker as Campron now has got into a two length lead as they level up for home. From in second place, Captain Combi. Langer down is closing. Nelson is there. Scaramanga, the ye yellow sleeves on the left. An epic song with that. But at the last, Campron and Aidan Coleman with about a two length advantage. Crash to it, but got over it by the length lead. Now in second place, an epic song. Langer down in the blue and yellow as well. It's between this trio. Campron to Langer down the blue and yellow jacket. Between those, an epic song. They come towards the line. Langer down from an epic song. Campron, Scaramanga, Bold Endeavour, Captain Combi, and good risk at all. Langer down, 9 to 1, wins the Coral Cup for the brothers, Skelton, Harry, and Dan. Colm Donlan, the winning owner, an epic song, 16 to 1 was second, Campron, 20 to 1 was third, a remote fourth, Scaramanga at 50 to 1, well behind the front three, who would just jump in the final flight as we saw it there. Campron in the JP McManus silks, touching a low of 1 to 4 in the run, an epic run from an epic song up in trip. But not to be denied, Langer Dan, who'd had a bit luckless, really, in the Martin Pipe the last couple of years. This was his day.
Harry Skelton just walking back after weighing in for Langadan, winning the Coral Cup. How was that? Third time lucky to go in the fray. Yeah, it was. Uh, he's been a bit unlucky. Got brought down last year and bumped into a, a gallop in the jump. But <laughs> he was entered in both races and, to be honest, Dan says, which one am I going for? I said, I've got to have my go. I've got to have my go on him. Um, lucky it was the right race. Look, what you need in that race, a bit of experience. He's got that. He's a good horse on his day. Dan's t training to perfection. Um, and Amber Blythe, our head girl, um, you know, it's been fantastic with this horse. The last past month hasn't really been that smooth, but yeah, Dan was um, just saying. it's a credit to the team. You need people around you. You need to be able to trust people, and that's exactly what Dan does. Colin's been a great supporter, but that horse deserved that. You were, know, you have, were you he, happy with your position all the way around? The whole way around. And I really thought the one to beat was, was JJ. Um, you know, they've got a great record here, those, those colours, so I thought that would be the one to follow. But everything just went well, and... You need the horse to get you there, and luckily I did. You found plenty. Many congratulations. Well done. Yeah, thank, thank you very you. much. Another Irish bred Cheltenham Festival winner. Contact Irish Thoroughbred Marketing to find yours. It's another Tattersall's National Hunt winner. Big race of the day came next. The Betway Queen Mother Champion chase and the defending champion, Energa Men, was 6-5 to five at the top of the market. They're off. They're racing then for the Betway Queen Mother Champion chase. They have 13 fences to jump. They begin with four in a row. And there's five in a row battling for the lead here. Fence number one on the right, Editor Dujit. Red Colours was just in front. The blue jacket, Energamine, running in second place. White Colours of Nube Negra is next. They're already at number two. Uh, behind these, extreme outside, is Fumabil Sivilla, red and white stripes on a black jacket. Uh, behind those, Grenatine in pink. The beige colours, Captain Guinness, goes the shortest way round, hugs the inside. Edward Stone, the second favourite, is alongside. They're very well bunched. There's only about four lengths between them as they come to fence number three. And Nal Hulan on Edda de Just in front and down is Fumabil Sivilla, number five. Fumabil Sivilla is a, a faller at fence number three. The others have cleared the fourth. Fumabil Sivilla is uh, continuing and jumping behind the others. Charlie Deutsch is up on his feet. The other six then make their way to fence five. Edda de Dujit, uh, the red jacket leads. Paul Townend in blue. Energamine travels very strongly the early part of the race. He's a half length behind. Running in second place. Uh, behind those, pink jacket is Grenatine and Harry Cobden. Wide out, Harry Skelton, Nube Negra. Red stripe on a white jacket. Beige and blue for Rachel Blackmore against the rails on Captain Guinness and Tom Cannon. Edward Stone, dark blue jacket, lighter blue sleeves is the fractional back marker of the sextet which remain as they come on towards fence number six. Edward Stone a little slower than maybe some of the others. Energamine jumping through to join Editor Dujit in front and Nube Negra wide has come up with him as well. Here's the water, it's the seventh. Grenatine and Captain Guinness are in fourth and fifth positions, two lengths behind those Edward Stone, the first of the open ditches coming up. In blue, Energamine in red, Editor Dujit are the pair that head the champion chase field. Both over it okay. Captain Guinness in beige jumps through into third place. Nube Negra and Grenatine together. Edward Stone a length off though, so still they're very tightly bunched as they head up to this next plane fence heading towards the top of the hill. Four more to jump from here. The final open ditch will be the next one. And it's the red of Editor Dujit and the blue of last year's winner Inugamine who raced together. Final open ditch coming up. Pink colours of Grenatine, the beige of Captain Guinness behind them in third and fourth places. And Grenatine walks through that one. He lo loses fourth position to Edward Stone. So at the top of the hill, it's all plain fences from here. There are three of them to take. The blue of Inugamine travelling strongly around the outside of the red of Editor Dujit. Right on their tails is Captain Guinness and here comes comes Edward Stone creeping closer. He's up into fourth position. Grenatine and Nuba Negra the next pair. They're coming down now to the third last. Editor Dujit and Energamine continue to be together in front. Captain Guinness is behind those. Edward Stone uh, close up in fourth position. And at the third last fence, uh, still very little to choose uh, between Energamine and Editor Dujit. But Captain Guinness 
coming into it. He's only a half length behind. Rachel Blackmore still holding on to him. Grenatine is behind those. Edward Stone is then back in fifth position, 10 lengths off the leaders. They come to the home turn. Energamine in the blue colours, with now Captain Guinness moving through into second place. But Paul Townend has the advantage here by a length and a half. Captain Guinness switches to the left as they jump the second last fence and didn't jump it too well in second, Captain Guinness. So it's Energamine who's cantering to victory as he comes to the last. He's up and over safely, six lengths clear. Captain Guinness in second. Edith to Dushit in third, Grenatine and Edward Stone just getting over the final fence. Nothing was a match today for Energamine. He's absolutely bolted up in the Spitway champion chase with Paul, End, uh, Paul Town and Energamine the winner. Yep, champion again, 65 favourite Energamine for Paul Town and Willie Mullins and Tony Bloom. Captain Guinness 12 to 1 was in second. And the winning rider receiving a, a five day careless riding ban for around the home turn, but it was Energamine's day once again and he joins the likes of Altior, Sprinter Sacra, Masterminded, Moscow Flyer as dual winners of the Queen Mother Champion Chase in the 21st century. Maybe with Edward Stone underperforming on the ground, Grenatine belting a fence. This one did rather hit a fence himself. Maybe uh, the others underperformed but he certainly didn't and he's the champion chaser again. Four winners at this year's festival, 92 overall. The man, of course, Willie Mullins, with the dual winner of the Queen Mother Champion Chase in Energamin. Right, what made the difference from here, from the Clarence House to here? I, I think he... Uh, uh, I think, first of all, Clarence House, he was upset by the white poles. Uh, it upset him at the first fence, that upset his rhythm. Today, Paul just said, we're, I'm jumping out and I'm going to attack it from the... You know, he, he didn't want to make the running, but if you want to, he took, going to jump out right there and attack it from the beginning. And he was just better. We just, I mean, well, I trained him for one race all year, and that was this race. The other races, if he won them, they were a bonus. He won in Cork, disappointed here. And then it was all about getting here today. When you have a horse of that calibre, you just train for one day. Well, that's what I try and do anyway. You know, it, it's all about champion chase when you have a horse like that, to me. You were in two minds, weren't you, about whether to come for the Clarence House after it was rescheduled, weren't you? Yeah, but when it was in Cheltenham, uh, I said, that's perfect, you know, uh, to come here. But it's never ideal when races are put back. But, um, you know, so it was great that we came here, got over those white poles, and we, you know, realised maybe we have a little bit more work to do with them. You know, lots of horses don't mind it. We've had lots of runners here this week, and we've had no problems with them. Uh, but at that time, it was just new, you know. You'd prepared him, I think, didn't you say, but with the white poles, but you just think that he needed to do more schooling with them? Yeah, sometimes, you know, horses can be funny. Some horses would walk out through uh, a bunch of dogs and paper bags blowing around. Other horses would spook at the same bush every morning of their lives. <laughs> they're, ju they're just like that, you know, so he's just sort of a little bit in between. But uh, I think he's over all that now. And the fact that the, the ground came right, the rain came, um, so everything came right for him today. And Paul was just in a very positive frame of mind going out there. Yes, you could see that right, yeah. right from the outset. Now, traditionally, at, on this day, we, we look back at the Arca winner and we compare that to the Queen Mother Champion Chase with it. You've got them both. Yeah. How do you see them? How do you compare them? Because you said yesterday, El Fabiola is the kind of horse you would like to train the Champion Chase. Yeah. Yeah. So it's it's nice to have two horses. You need plenty of them <laughs> in this game. They. They have a, a nasty habit of getting injured and going wrong for you all year, you know. So if you have two or three going for one race, you hope you can get one there, and that's that's what we try to do. And in terms of them themselves, how would you compare them in terms of their personalities and how they go over two miles? Ooh, that horse, uh, an ergamine, seems to be such a fast jumper. Uh, the other fellow has such speed, even though I ran him over, uh, sorry, uh, Fabiolo has such speed, I think, you know, that's, that's the difference. He mightn't just be the slickest jumper, not yet, but he's only had, what, four runs in his life? But he has as much practice as this guy. Remember, an argument came from an English point to point, so he was schooled, schooled, schooled. I mean, he, he, he was uh, Nicky, um, Nico de Bonville told me he schooled him in Nicky Henderson's uh, before we bought him, yeah. you know, so he'd, he'd had a huge amount of schooling and it's just paid off. So it's, it's you know, French horse coming through an English point to point, 
I did. It hasn't been done before, uh, anyway. Yeah. Yeah. It would be an in- if you do get them both here on yeah. this day next year. It'll be an interesting matchup, won't it? It will. Wonder which Paul will write. <laughs> <laughs> I said I'd ask that question before you ask. We've me. got a whole. T- I'm not going to ask <laughs> it now. We've got a whole 12 months. Many congratulations. Yeah. Well done, Willie. Thank you. Thank Cheers. You. Bye. Tony Bloom is the proud owner of Energamine, the dual winner of the Queen Mother Champion Chase. Many congratulations. Now, I know some, even in your camp, were doubting this. What were you thinking? Uh, I don't think anyone in my camp was doubting. We believed in an ergamine. It didn't do so well in the, in, the, in the Clarence house, but we were very confident coming in here. The rain helped, gave us more confidence, and he ran an unbelievable race. So what was Willie Mellon telling you in the run-up to the race? He gave me all the signs of confidence, and so that was good, good enough for me. And the rain came. The, it was a bit. It's a bit like deja vu, isn't it, compared to last year? Not yeah, quite as wet. Perhaps. Not quite as wet. I was completely soaked this time last year. But we do like the rain at the Cheltenham Festival for an ergamine. And yeah, he looked the winner a long way out. A bit like last year. But last year he had a lot of help because um, a couple of his main rivals struggled early on. Um, but. That didn't happen today. He just showed his class today. Now, the doubt I was referring to is just over your shoulder there, Keith the Camel. Now, he was saying that he fancied Edward Stone, doesn't he? And you, were you having none of that? Uh, I persuaded him over the course of dinner <laughs> that, that an argument was a horse to get on, and he believed me <laughs> by the end of a few, after a few glasses of wine. I'm glad to hear that. Now, how are you going to celebrate this? Uh, we're going to have a few glasses of wine, maybe a glass of champagne, and then we're off to the Amex for the big derby, the big rivalry, at least, Brighton against Crystal Palace, uh, which I'm really looking forward to a 7:30 p.m. kickoff. Well, I hope you get the big double up. Thank you very much. So do we. Many congratulations. Well Thank done. You. Thank you. It's another Tattersall's National Hunt winner. The unique race, the Glen Farkless Chase over the cross-country course was next. Delta work to win it again was 11 to 10. Well, they're off. Away first time for the Glen Farkless Chase. Short run to the first of the 32 fences. Frankie de Burle was up amongst the leaders, but he nodded on landing. And he was out jumped by Lieutenant Rocco, the white-faced chestnut who goes on with his stablemate Kuda Panso against the Royal Black Jacket with a red cap working across to the grey Diesel Dallier, Frankie de Burley and the grey mare Snow Leopardess, the dark blue out wide as they come on to uh, fence two. Desha Abba and at the back of the field, Gin on Lime has gone. Party company with Rachel Blackmore. So Gin on Lime is out of the race at the second. Easy's Land is held up in rear hoop jacket with a white cap as they take the Birch Island fence. And Delta Work in the Jiggins Tan silks of maroon and white tracks the leaders as they head on towards fence four, which is the Aintree style canal turn uh, for the first time. And Snow Leopardess and Lieutenant Rocco push the early pace along to Frankie de Burle, Coup de Pinceau, and Delta Work, who's taken out wide to cut the corner. Closing in on the entry fence, leaders jumping it nimbly enough. Galvin, red cap is just behind them with a nose-banded grey diesel Dallier and Desha Abba. And then Foxy Jacks in a white jacket back on the lash in the blue and white sheepskin noseband is caught fairly wide. Uh, Hardline is held up at this stage with Mortal, who's in the blue and yellow as they go out over fence six. Franco de Port is in the last group of three. He's got the white sleeves alongside plan of attack and Easy's land is last to the 15 as they continue their progress towards the end of the first three quarters of a mile and head on with the Glen Farkless barrels behind them for the first time uh, to fence eight. Be about, what, 12 or 15 lengths covering the field as they take this fairly sharp right-handed turn on towards the ninth of Timber Rail. Snow Leopardess and the white-faced chestnut Lieutenant Rocco racing three or four lengths ahead of Cuda Panso in third and Delta Work tracking them, going smoothly at this very early stage in fourth. Mistake from Foxy Jacks, who's all but gone. The call of gravity was strong, but somehow Ricky Doyle has managed to stay in the saddle. White Jacket, he's now struggling to get his irons back, but he's still a disputed fifth place with Frankie de Burle just ahead of Galvin as Snow Leopardess assumes command there with a better jump than Lieutenant Rocco. Uh, back on the lash, got in a little bit close to that and is being bustled along now towards the rear of the field. They go on towards the 11th, which is the railed hedge and ditch. Easy's land is last of all. He's detached by six or seven lengths from the main group. And it's Snow Leopardess towards fence 11. 
She jumps well to Lieutenant Rocco Dull to work Cuda Pan, so Frankie de Burle. Then Foxy Jacks recovering his poise after that serious error. They move on towards fence 12, which is the pole railed hedge. Easy's Land continues detached from the others. Mortal clipping the top in midfield. He's racing just ahead of Hardline and Franco de Port. Dacia Abra has lost his position being pushed along. Diesel Dallier, the other greys, has lost ground. Plan of attack is towards the rear still. Back on the lashes last but one and still in rear is Easy's Land as they go across the bank. And it's Snow Leopard S just stringing the field out now. Top to tail, including Easy's Land, there would be 30 lengths or more covering them as they run down towards the water for the first of two occasions. This is the 14th, and Snow Leopard S with a spring heeled leap has come away from the field now by five or six lengths as they turn left handed to meet the cheese wedges before setting out on another circuit. Snow Leopard S clear of Lieutenant Rocco in second and Delta Work is a further three lengths back and still going smoothly behind the leading duo. Snow Leopard S going neatly through the cheese wedges. Rest of the field beginning to stream through it now. Uh, back on the lashes, still going at the back of the field with Daisha Abba, but he's about to be pulled up back on the lash. Daisha Abba is tailed off, and Easy's Land is out of the race as well. So setting off on their second circuit on towards the 17th, the railed hedge and ditch once again. Snow Leopard S by three or four lengths to Lieutenant Rocco. Cuda Panso in third, Delta Work, Maroon Jacket again going out wide on this section of the track. Then Frankie de Burley to Galvin, White Sleeves, Red Cap in midfield. Deja Abra has been pulled up. Foxy Jack slightly worse than mid division after an error on the first circuit. Then Plan of Attack followed by Mortal Franco to Port Spot, the yellow cap uh, out wide. Mortal the striped cap further back, hard line. And Diesel Dallier is last of those still going. And there are now 25 lengths top to tail. And it's Snow Leopardess leading them on towards the 20th. She remains clear and seems to be enjoying herself in front as well. Lieutenant Rocco continues to head the pursuit to uh, Delta Work and Cuda Panso Black Jacket with a red cap in fourth, coming on towards fence 19, the double-banked hedge. Diesel Dallier once again was the last to take it. Now fairly sharp right-handed turn towards the 20th, the railed hedge with a ditch. Snow Leopard S, Lieutenant Rocco, Delta Work, Coup de Pinceau, Frankie de Burley, Galvin. Another good jump from the mayor, Snow Leopard S in front. Less so from Foxy Jacks. He made one serious mistake. He's made another one, and this time he has unseated Ricky Doyle. It was an heroic effort first time, but second time was too much for Ricky, and Foxy Jacks is out of the race. As Snow Leopard S continues to lead Lieutenant Rocco. Delta Work continues to travel smoothly, a very close third. Frankie de Burley right in behind them. Mistake there from Plan of Attack. He's being ridden along, struggling to stay in touch at this stage. And they make their way now towards the water for the second time. It's fence 22 of the 32 in the Glen Farkless chase. Snow Leopard S, Lieutenant Rocco, Delta Work in third, Frankie de Burle a close fourth, Galvin has been popping away quite quietly in behind them, upsides Coup de Panso taking the water, then Franco de Port and Mortal to hard line in the dark green and white and plan of attack emerging from out of the landing side of the water, Diesel Dallier has cried enough, he's out of the race, so they're thinning out one by one as they prepare to embark upon their final circuit in the Glen Farkless chase, over 23 they go, Snow Leopard S being rejoined by Lieutenant Rocco. Three lengths ahead of Delta Work. Galvin has moved up onto his tail. Then Frankie de Burley out wide from Franco de Port Coup de Pinceau. Further back in the field to hard line and mortal and plan of attack ridden along last of those who set out towards fence 25, the railed hedge with ditch. And it's still the grey mare Snow Leopard S and the white-faced chestnut Lieutenant Rocco. They've been pretty much the leading pair from the outset. Uh, Delta Work hunting them up with Frankie de Burley and Galvin. Alvin. They round out the leading five. Three or four lengths further back to uh, Franco de Port. Over the split island fence once more. This time in rear plan of attack goes widest of all, but he's been struggling for a while. Hardline is struggling. Coup de Panso is struggling. Mortal in the blue and yellow hasn't yet been put in the race, and they come to the entry style fence once again. It's fence 27 of the 32. Frankie de Burley in the centre is moving up to Lieutenant Rocco and
and Snow Leopardess has just drifted back a, a few positions and she's beginning to lose her place quite quickly now, the mare, and is weakening and being eased off. So Frankie de Berle goes on, but the move is immediately covered by Delta Work. Right behind him still Lieutenant Rocco, who's been prominent from the outset, and Galvin is a very close fourth as we head now towards the closing stages and they move towards the third last. It's the Glen Farkless Barrels. Frankie de Berle out jumping Delta Work there. A length and a half between them on landing. Delta Work though quickly back on the bridle as they head back onto the race course with two left to jump in the Glen Farkless chase. Frankie de Berle stalked by Delta Work, the maroon and white. Galvin poised in behind, now a very close third. Lieutenant Rocco back in fourth. Then Franco Duport from Mortal Clear as Snow Leopardess and they're swinging for home and it's here that Galvin and Delta Work move on together. They're the stable mates lock horns and they come close together off the final bend. Racing down towards the 32nd and final fence of the Glen Farkless chase. And it's Delta Work. Galvin on the near side. Galvanised. They're going to rise as one. Delta Work and Galvin come away from the last together. They lock horns halfway up the run-in. Delta Work noses ahead. Galvin has got no more to offer, and it's Delta Works date with destiny again in the Glen Farkless chase. Three festival wins. Delta Works sees off Galvin in a Gordon Elliott one-two. Delta Work, 11 to 7 favourite, has won it again, Keith Donahue. Gordon Elliott, Jiggins Townhouse, stud, the trainer with an excellent record in this race. Galvin stable mate, 11 to 4, second. Franco de Port, miles back in third, but another Irish clean sweep, 9 to 2 the price of the third and so it was over the last obstacle it was the Elliott pair to fight this out Delta Work last year had been a bit of a villain downing uh, his much celebrated stable mate Tiger Roll but this was his day Galvin first crack around these fences and a big big run English national for both of these next Keith Donahue is rapidly making this race his own three wins with Tiger Roll and now with Delta Work many many congratulations how was it yeah look it was very straightforward we went a good gallop on the ground I had a class to travel he went on the ground he jumped brilliant and it couldn't have went any easier for me and Galvin, I saw you take a look round at Galvin at that point. Were you seeing him as the main threat in the race? Yeah, obviously looking on ratings and looking at the betting, he was my main danger. And, you know, when I could feel something coming to me after the second half, I looked over, I, I was a little bit worried that it was him coming. I was hoping it would be something else. But, uh, you know, when, we, when I asked my lad to go down to the last, I felt he was quickening and I knew he'd stay well. Obviously that ground was going to disadvantage Galvin. And uh, I was a little bit slow at the last, but, you know, when he up the hill and I got a length clear, his ears were pricked, he was just doing enough. He's very, very good at this isn't he very good uh, he's so quick he like a well, horse probably wasn't a great jumper over normal fence he's brilliant over them and uh, it's just brilliant obviously like thank god and a lot for putting me on him and uh, it's it's great to get a winner channel how would you compare him over these obstacles with Tiger Roll? Probably a bit more scope. He probably jumps the fence a bit more, whereas Tiger Roll was probably quicker and threw them a bit more. You know, Tiger didn't leave. The Tiger just done enough over them, you know. But that, that was his, his way of doing it, and he was very good. Whereas this, like, can actually lose a little bit of time in the air, but he's still, he's still very good. And how about him? Does he look good for the Grand National Del Delta work now? I think so. I think he has to. And, uh, you know, he, he, he bolted up there. Like, you know, his ears were pricked, and uh, he didn't have a hard race. So, you know, obviously he was... You know, he turned it last year, so he probably has to improve a little bit in it, but, but he's every right to go for it. Yeah, he cruised through that, didn't he? He did, yeah, he really did, yeah. Well, Keith, many congratulations, well done. Thank you, thanks. There's another belting finish in this race, Gordon, well done. Yeah, delighted. Listen, um, Delta had the experience, but Galvin was brilliant. Uh, he ran his heart out. There are two nice horses to come back from this race for the next couple of years, and both of them now head for the English National. Yeah, well, that, that, that was going to be my next question. That's unsurprising. I mean, it, would Galvin be better suited by a sounder surface, do you think, off the back of that? Uh, look, it'd be interesting to see what they... I, I think it had it inc inconvenienced Delta more, the better ground, which okay. I th that would have made Galvin have a better chance. But in fairness to Delta, he stayed very well. Oh. Davey headed him over the last, and... And Galvin put Delta put his head back down, but listen, great to have a winner. We we're just short headed in a lot of seconds at yeah. We're just the second winner on the board now, so we're, we're happy. And, and Delta, has he just outstayed his stable companion there, do you think? Or in this ground, he's a better hole? It looks like it, but I'd say there could be improvement in Galvin. Mm. We got a little hold up with him. Uh, you know, he just mightn't have just been as, as hard fit. He was fit, but mightn't be as hard fit as your fella. A line on Keith, you've teamed up with great success in this race before. Keith is with me since he's 14 years of age. Obviously, he's gone freelance now, but great to use him again. And listen, unbeliever. He's got a what? Thanks, thanks.
Next up was the final race over any form of obstacle. It was the Johnny Henderson Grand Annual, now run on a Wednesday. Dino Blue, 7 to 2. Andy Defray in the same colours, 9 to 2. Oh, they're off. They get away with the last day in the noseband. Royal blue colours having to be bustled up in rear as they head to the first in the Johnny Henderson Grand Annual Global Citizen. Last year's winner, Pink Jacket, unsurprisingly, up amongst the leaders with Epson de Ou. At the other end of the field, battle over Doyen. Uh, needs a little bit of an early encouragement. Black Jacket last of all. A midnight run is also towards the rear as Global Citizen leads them over the second. But only narrowly to Dino Blue racing keenly. The hoops with a quartered cap. The great elixir de Nuts is handy, so too Epson de Ou uh, towards the inside. Tracked there by Mascada in a red jacket. Malistic in the sheepskin noseband and Curse of Lime in the stripes just in behind him as they approach the third to final orders and then sizing Potsy as Global Citizen leads by a couple of lengths on landing. A mistake in rear from Midnight Run. Uh, last but one, still at the tail of the fields is battle over Doyen as they uh, clear out over the fourth. So swinging to meet rising ground, it's Global Citizen who leads the grand annual field. Uh, chased a couple of lengths away by Dino Blue to Elixir de Nats, Epson de Ou in fourth ahead of Malistic and then Mascada and Curse of Lime in the stripes. And then final orders, the dark blue and yellow racing ahead of Sizing Potsy on the nose banded Time White who races out wide. Uh, before midnight, Andy Dufresne and Call Me Lyreen when the next one's over. And then in behind those third time, Lucky, who is tracking before midnight. Uh, the last day in the raw blue cut in the corner to Dad's ladder, wave of the sea, battle over Doyen. And midnight run still towards the rear of the field as they now move on uh, towards Fence 6. Global Citizen setting fairly stern fractions here, and he's got them stretched out by a good, uh, what, 25 or 30 lengths possibly. And he leads himself by four or five lengths over Dino Blue, who heads the pursuit over the water. The Grey Elixir de Nuts landed in third, ahead of Epson de Ou, and then Malistic and Mascada in a red jacket to Curse of Lime and Time White out a little wider from Cormie Lyrene. Uh, final orders is next as they take the first of a pair of ditches in the race approaching the halfway point. Uh, quite a serious mistake there from a wave of the sea in the last group of three, uh, with Midnight Run and Battle over Doyen. Uh, Andy Dufresne continues to be held up. The McManus hoops with a white cap. He's got more in front than behind at this stage. Sizing Potsy made a mistake there as they now race across the top of the hill and on towards the second of the ditches and it's four from home in the Grand Annual. It's Global Citizen but they are beginning to cluster up in behind. Dino Blue in the hoops remains in second to Elixir de Nuts and then Epson de Who the maroon and white to Time White in a sheepskin noseband. Curse of Lime and Malistic are right in behind the leaders and then before midnight Andy Dufresne frame beginning to make progress down on the inner spot the uh, white cap racing in about seventh or eighth position as they begin the descent with three fences left to jump it's still global citizen he leads by two lengths over Dino Blue racing in second, Elixir de Nuts is third, and Mascada is racing close up Red Jacket. Time White in the noseband is wide of Curse of Lime in the stripes. Epson de Ou down on the inner track there by Andy Dufresne. Uh, the back of the field away for the sea is being pulled up as they take three from home. Final orders took it back in midfield, and now they make the run back towards the straight. Three furlongs to go, and they've got two left to jump. Global Citizen to Dino Blue in the hoops. The grey Elixir de Nuts, Time White in the nose band. Mascada in the red jacket has every chance. Third time lucky in the black and white beginning to breeze into it. Then Curse of Lime in the stripes and a break then to Epson de Ou as they turn their heads for home and face the second last. Global Citizen has a lot of challenges. Dino Blue came alongside. Time White unseated. Hampered third time lucky. On towards the final fence. Mascada gets through on the inside. Bad mistake from Dino Blue. Hands the lead to Mascada who now forges on under Dara Oak Keith. Dino Blue gathered up, but the gap has grown to half a dozen lengths, and Mascada is staying on powerfully up the Cheltenham Hill for Dara O'Keefe and Henry de Bromhead. It's Mascada who wins the Grand Annual. Dino Blue in second, Global Citizen, an heroic effort in third, third time lucky in fourth, and then final orders. Yeah, drama at the end. Mascada it was, though, for Dara O'Keefe, a first festival win. Henry de Bromhead, uh, 22 to 1, the price to win. And Dino Blue, 72 favourite. Uh, second, Global Citizen 12 to 1 was third this year. Third time lucky, 8 to 1. Done no favours by what happened to Time White. Uh, we joined after that particular moment. You can see the 
uh, anger in the jockey as well, Time White, who would have been a leading player. But congratulations, Mascada, formerly trained in Britain, who kept towards the inner down in trip, now trained by Henry de Bromhead. And she scoots clear from Dino Blue, who made late mistakes, but I think the bird had probably flown. And Darrell O'Keefe celebrating his first Cheltenham Festival winner on Mascada. Many congratulations. This is a moment I'm sure you've dreamed of. Ah, oh, definitely. Like, you know, it's it's an amazing place. And, uh, you know, to come over with a, with a few rides, it's, it's, a, it's a great privilege. And, uh, you know, I was just touched off last year in the Coral Cup. And then I was touched off in the Paddy Power here as well and French Dynamite. I was, I was starting to get nightmares about this place. <laughs> but, um, you know, thankfully, um, you know, I'm just great from the owners to put me up. Um, I was going to win a Mayor's Chase, a handicap chase, and this one in Fairy House. And she tipped over the second last and then um, she won in Limerick next time out but uh, you know in fairness the owners put me back on her and uh, she loved the conditions out there today and uh, she jumped super the whole way around so it's brilliant. Talk me through the race how it developed for you. Yeah I had a lovely spin around and you know she can be a bit keen but you know I suppose kind of going that gallant like she's ran over further in the past so you know I was just about hanging in there but I had a nice posse and she was jumping great and uh, you know I winged the fourth last and I was just able to follow it down to the third last and um, you know I switched in then round the home bend because I knew the ground wasn't going like I said it's off the ground for the better and uh, you know she pinged the second last and the last and um, you know she kept on great up the hill. Her jumping put the seal on it didn't it she was really good today. Yeah her jumping is very good and as I said like it's had let her down a couple of times in the past and in fairness today she fell at me she, she, you know it was just one of those things she knuckled over but uh, you know delighted to write a winner for, for Henry and Heather there as well you know the, you know for the year that's in it and um, it's a testament to them and uh, you know did a great day here yesterday so I'm delighted to add another one to the board for them. Henry's got his team in great form for this week hasn't he? Yeah you know he's a fantastic trainer and he's been brilliant to me um, you know I gave him my first grade one winner as well and you know he's given me plenty of other high profile rides as well and uh, you know in fairness to me he's been marvellous to me and uh, you know I'm very just appreciative of everyone. It's great that you can put those at Cheltenham just touched off you know put them to bed you don't have to think about them anymore that's it yeah yeah you know as I said it was um you know it wasn't too bad a fella Cor I'm from Cork in Ireland and uh, Shane Fitzgerald beat me last year so he's only over the road so that was the only t thing that I took out of it that uh, it, that the uh, Carl Cup didn't go too far from home but uh <laughs> you know we're delighted delighted to get my first one on the board now thanks for that. what does the rest of the week look like for you um I'm here tomorrow I've two tomorrow I've uh, French Dynamite in the Ryanair and uh I've built the line S in in the Mayor's Novice for Henry and uh, I'm going back to Ireland in down Royal Friday, so uh, I'm happy out now with, with, with today. That'll do me. Two good chances there tomorrow. In French Dynamite, I mean, Shishkin does seem to tire over the field, but I think that, you know, that, that with, without Alaho in the race, it's, you know, he's going to be able to hold his position up. Ah, he will. You know, he's a very classy horse, and, um, you know, he had plenty of weight in the paddy power, and he was just touched off, bit unlucky, missed the last, and, you know, um, he was second to last in Turles, the Fakir, the Diaries, and, you know, I just thought he, he wasn't, probably didn't perform what he was capable of, but uh, I rode him out this morning he looks fantastic and uh, no better man than most to get one ready for today as well so please absolutely. God he'll run a big race yeah absolutely right and Beldeliner she's got the chance as well exactly and I think the rain, any more rain that falls to suit her as well you know um, she won her maiden hurdle the last day it was a messy race but um, you know she's been play, placing a list of the races and that in, in Turles so look as I said she might have an each way a chance hopefully well let's be greedy let's try to get more than one win but you can celebrate this one now congratulations Dara well done cheers thanks Lydia cheers thank, thank you, you. Henry de Bromhead has got his team in magnificent form for the Cheltenham Festival here. Honeysuckle yesterday in that marvellous day. Excellent second from Captain Guinness in the Queen Mother Champion Chase. And now Mascada's win in the Grand Daniel. Brilliant. Yeah, delighted. Yeah, delighted for everybody. Um, the Marigas are great supporters of ours and they've got a fantastic... Uh, Broodmare band, so delighted for them. They put a lot into the game, and uh, and Darrow O'Keefe is first winner at Cheltenham, so that's brilliant for him. Yeah, she's a lovely mare, and uh, she loves soft ground. And actually, Paul Roach, who suggested we buy her back at home as well. So you know, a lot of people involved, and uh, delighted. So when you saw the rain coming, you were thinking, oh, this is going to work for her. Yeah, uh, yeah, as much as I would. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. Um, no, but uh, yeah, we were hoping. You know, it certainly the ground. Suitor and Dara said she absolutely loved it. She won at Limerick at Christmas. The horse she beat has done very well since, so her form was strong. And she was a bit disappointing at Leopardstown. We felt the ground might have just been a bit too nice for her there. And yeah, it's brilliant, amazing. Her jumping was great today as well. Yeah, deadly, absolutely. She's a really good mare, and yeah, delighted to, to, to have her, and, and uh, delighted for everybody. And during the course of the season, you know, there was form a little bit patchy. Did you imagine that you were going to get them here in such fine form? Yeah, I see. I don't know. I, I found it more 
frustrating than um, than anything, to be honest. Through the season, I suppose we're we're trying to aim for the spring always, you know. And it's so flipping competitive, you know. You have to pick your spots a, a, at home, you know. You just you can't just turn up every. I, we we don't have the numbers to turn up everywhere, you know. And yeah. so you try and pick your spots. I'm sure. Look, it's somehow we've managed to land on here for the moment, anyhow. Well, the momentum is building, isn't it, for tomorrow <laughs> and for the for the Gold Cup as well for Aplutar and Minello Indo. How are you feeling? Yeah, they're in good form. We're really happy with them and. Uh, yeah, sure. Look, it, it gives everyone a little bit more confidence anyhow. Yeah, so we'll see. And I just heard uh, Nicky Henderson, uh, of course, this is Johnny Henderson, Grand Daddy, will say to you that yesterday was the best hour of racing ever. It was lovely to see oh, the two of you. What else did he say to you? It really felt it. Yeah, look, well, I was, it was such an honour to win that race as well, you know, so much history to it. Um, but, um, yeah, like, yeah, it, it was just, I was just blown away by Constitution Hill as well. I was just, we were just saying that and... Look, he's an amazing man, and I, you know, I'll have him up there on a pedestal. Like he's a brilliant trainer, and yeah, if I can do half as well as him, I'll be very happy. And is Henny Suckle bouncing this morning? Yeah, she seemed really well. She looked a little bit in season, actually, so she might be <laughs> getting covered sooner than we think. But uh, yeah, no, she's definitely walking in the park rather than walking to Punchestown. Well, there goes so, Punchestown. Yeah, yeah, there goes Punchestown. <laughs> So, yeah, look, um, uh, yeah, fair play to him to try and handle her. Anyway, we'll see how he gets on. Yeah, yeah. So that's good. Yeah. OK, well, many congratulations. Uh, I hope this fine form continues for the remainder Thanks, of Lydia. this festival. Really Thank appreciate you. it. Thank you. Thank you very much. Weatherby champion bumper the final race of the day, the 5.30, a grade one race on the level. And fact to file, 16 to 5, a strong hand for the Irish. Now they're off for the Weatherby's champion bumper, the race that rounds out day two of the festival. And it's Westport Cove in the Emerald Green who goes freely in front and bounds on by a couple of lengths early to chosen witness in the dark blue racing handily. Western Diego in a grey jacket is another one inclined to take a bit of a grip early on. Captain Cody Orange with a blue cap is close up in the leading line. Followed by Captain Teague, spot the pink cap, raw blue socks for Harry Cobden. Encanto Bruno in the black and white. Lecky Watson, white face in about eighth position at this stage with Dar Dar in an emerald green cap. Locke Glynn in the stripes is towards midfield as they continue steady progress up the straight first time. Also in midfield, Favour and Fortune with the white sleeves and cap. Beach Coma is buried away with Fiercely Proud in the dark green. Nosebound at Queen's Gamble towards the rear as they cover by about 12 lengths going on the incline. So meeting rising ground, Westport Cove. To Chosen Witness racing a close second, Western Diego in third, Captain Cody, Royal Blue Cap in fourth. Uh, being followed by Captain Teagan and Canto Bruno and then Lecky Watson to Dar Dar Lachlan Fassal Mode in a red and grey jacket. And then towards the outside, the white cap of Factor File in the hoops. He's racing upsides the likes of Fassal Mode and Lachlan. Beachcomb is tucked away on the inner in behind uh, Favour and Fortune as they begin the descent at the end now of uh, three quarters of a mile. Uh, slightly worse than midfield, fiercely proud in the dark green silks. Queen's Gamble continues to be held up. Fun, fun, fun is another of those held up with a white cap. So too, a uh, dream to share and no time to wait. And Chapeau du Soleil is a very patient ride from Paul Town and on It's For Me, who's just about last of all in the double green. And better days ahead, Jamie Codd in the white and green, red cap on the far side of the rear cluster. Up ahead, a Westport Co still hasn't settled, but has now been headed by Chosen Witness in the dark blue, who moves on narrowly. Rounding out the leading three is Captain Cody, followed by Western Diego in fourth, and then Encanto Bruno as they go through halfway to Captain Teague. Uh, Dar Dar with a green cap alongside Lecky Watson, and then Favour and Fortune uh, to Lock Glynn and Fassal Mode and Fiercely Proud, and then Beach Comer and Fun, 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 No Time to Wait. A dream to share the star on the cap is towards the rear and at this stage is uh, tracking his owner mate Factor Fire who's got the white cap Chapeau du Soleil is in the last group of four still very patiently ridden it's for me uh, he's in that last group of three pretty much and the last two as they begin the descent and come down the hill are better days ahead and Queen's Gamble is just about last of all 
So beginning to freewheel in the Weatherby's champion bumper. And up ahead, it's chosen witness alongside Captain Cody. Western Diego Grey Jacket continues to pull very hard. Westport Cove in behind has lost a little ground. They're beginning to stack up in behind the leaders. Up on the outer, Encanto Bruno in the black and white. Wider out, Lecky Watson in the red and white with Fassar Mode and Factor File the white cap. Captain Teague in the blue and pink is towards the inner. On the right, followed there by Favour and Fortune and Dada, who's being ridden along. Fiercely proud, dark green with the Maroon Cap not far off them as Western Diego has pulled his way to the front under Rachel Blackmore, beginning the swing back towards home. Chased now by Captain Cody and Canto Bruno. Here's Lecky Watson on the outer and then from the rear, running on Factor File away to the left and further left, a dream to share. Climbing now for the last furlong and a half. Captain T coming through to challenge Western Diego. Here's a dream to share and Factor File squeezed out. Lecky Watson in a rough finish. Captain Cody is next. Deep inside the last furlong a dream to share for a dream result in the champion bumper factor file for Oakmanus 1-2 and it's teenage clicks for John Gleason. a dream to share from factor file captain Teague in third close fourth Lecky Watson it's for me running on and captain Cody in what was a rough finish to the champion bumper it was rough and the stewards looked into it but it was unaffected by the winner, certainly the finish. That was a dream to share as regards any form of schmozzle and a fairy tale result for the connection. 7 to 2 for John Gleason, John Kiley, who has beaten Factor File, 16 to 5 favourite, and Captain Teague, 40 to 1. But there was a real coming together, but you can spot the winner. Widest to the left, jostling for position. It all became very, very tight. Factor File from one side, Captain Teague from the other, meeting the sandwich delights of Western Diego. But what a dream on his first ride for John Gleason, the horse bred by his father. Now with JP McManus and the festival, a place where dreams come true. Amazing scenes for an amazing story here in the Cheltenham Winners' Enclosure. A dream to share has won in the hands of young John Gleeson on his first Cheltenham Festival ride. Many congratulations. I'm sure you've imagined this in your head many times, but did it go to plan? Yeah, I can't believe how smoothly it went, to be honest, Lydia. If that just happened, I can't believe it. <laughs> <laughs> so talk me through it. T tell me blow by blow. Yeah, look, we kind of set out to keep it simple. That We thought the ground was a bit poached everywhere, but we thought outside it was maybe a slightly better, and we decided to take our time on the ground. It's quite holding, and we did that, and it was so smooth. He did it so well. And it looked quite rough on your inside, but you were fine sailing through. Did you, did you see the roughness? To be honest, I didn't. I didn't see any of it. I was smooth sailing the whole way. I kind of followed Patrick, got a lovely toe into it, and... It just worked out so perfectly. <laughs> it, it really did. It's like, it's like a dream world, isn't it, the way it has? It is. I just cannot believe it, Lydia. You know, just to be here at the festival, I can't believe it. It's unreal. And tell me how you prepared for this. Just the same as we did for Leopard Sound, really. You know, John Kiley, to have a winner for John at the Chetland Festival, I can't. That man is so good to me, and at his age, and he just keeps me so cool, and there was no pressure. And to Mr McManus as well for giving me the opportunity and keeping the ride. I'm very grateful. Yes, and was that always going to happen? Once yeah, JP yeah, Mr. McManus was very generous. He said, I, I definitely keep the ride here today. And, you know, it was great. There was no pressure from him, and it was brilliant. That's so great. After you've done all the work in putting the horse together to get to this point. Yeah, it's very, very special. We're a small team at home David, Lois, Tommy, John, Sean Mack. We know we're a small team, but we do very well. We try our best to get to the big stage and to win. I can't believe it. And you were telling me at the Dublin Racing Festival how much John Kiley has put into you. Just for people who didn't see that interview, just explain. Oh, for sure. I've been going to John's with Dad for as long as I can remember, really. He's 10 minutes in the road from us. I ride out this horse every day before going into school. So it's <laughs> special. It's very special. You're doing your leaving cert this year? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. I have to park the books for a week, but it's more important. <laughs> I reckon it was worth it, don't you? Definitely, yeah. Definitely. And the name of the horse is fantastic. I dream to show your dad was explaining at the Dublin Racing Festival that he particularly wanted to call the horse this because it was such a family thing. It must be so special for you. Yeah, ma'am named the horse on Christmas Day there a couple of years back. And it's very special. They're all here today and it's great to be here. I think your dad is, is coming over at some point to join us, so it'll be great to see him. He's going to be a one proud dad, isn't he? I'd say he will be, yeah. No, he, he gets a great kick out of it all and he's very good to me, you know, giving me plenty of support and ma'am as well, and which is great. Delighted for him as well. And have you been calmer in the run-up to this than he has? I'd say slightly, yes. I'd imagine so. <laughs> I bet you have. Yeah. yeah, no, he was very excited. You know, it's great to come here with a horse, you know, and let alone a chance, and it was great that it came off. Here he is. Father. Here it. Here, here is Brian. Father, yeah. Brian. <laughs> <laughs> it's lovely. I mean, you must be so proud. 
It's, it's tremendous, isn't it, Lydia? You know what it means. Cheltenham Festival, your sun riding, those colours, and trained by a maestro and John Kiley. It's, if it doesn't get, it's nearly a, it's nearly a, a book. You and John were just explaining, the, the name of the horse as well is so special. It is, it was named by Claire, it was, we always say that, that like, everything good in life is worth sharing. And this horse, we always thought, was good. And Claire on the Christmas day said, I'm going to call this horse a dream to share. Trained by John Kiley, and the dream to win at the Cheltenham Festival. And John Kiley has been, has been so much, as my wife Claire. Come, Hello I mean, Claire. Claire you Congratulations. The lady that <laughs> I like to be in the background. <laughs> Bad luck. <laughs> it's on. John Kiley, and you know, everyone loves John Kiley. But if you speak to John Frankham or Alistair Down or Bruff Scott, or, this man is what, 86 in May. He's been second in a Cheltenham Festival with Take Five when Ruba Honish came by him. He was third with Frawley with Q Cardinal for Oven. And now he's had his first festival winner, JP's 70th and John Gleeson's first. It was, look, it's, it's fairy tale stuff. What an incredible ride your son gave that horse. But that's down to the maestro, John Kiley. He was, he was just saying that it's all down to everything that he's taught him. Yeah, patience, yeah, patience, and, and of course the owner as well, Bruff Scott. Oh. <laughs> you kept saying it. I didn't mean, you believe me. The best name ever. The best named horse ever. It, it, ah, it's a wonderful, wonderful Bruff Scott and I spoke about this at Royal Ascot last year. Really? Yeah, didn't we? Oh. And we, so after he won, he was, when we were in Royal Ascot for ITV, this horse won his second bumper in Roscommon. And, and I said to Bruff... We watched it. Didn't we? We watched it together. Oh. And I said to Bruff, keep the faith, keep the faith. I'm this crying horse. with the light. Yeah. <laughs> it's really, really lovely. Your son, I reckon, has been a bit calmer in the run-up to this than you. Have you been walking the box a bit? Yes, I have. <laughs> <laughs> but he gets the coolness from his man. <laughs> have you been cool? Oh, yes. Oh, One okay. of us have to be. <laughs> Somebody has to. Exactly. Well, what did you make of it, Bruff? Oh, I'm, too, I'm just so happy for you all. I really am. Racing can yeah. bring happiness, can't yes, it? That was yes, a lovely, yes, lovely sure. result. Yeah. It really time. Absolutely. I don't think it's soft. Time. It's true. It, it, it's amazing. A really a dreamlike story. Yeah. Many congratulations Thank to you all. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Everybody here at Cheltenham wants to shake John Kiley's hand. They want to have a photo taken with him. He's just delivered a dream to share to win the champion bumper for the Gleasons and for J.P. McManus. He must be very proud. I'm delighted. I'm thrilled, thrilled uh, to win a, a race in Cheltenham, any kind of a race, but to win the champion bumper and for J.P. It couldn't be better. Let's go through them one by one, shall we? Shall we start with, with young John Gleeson? What a ride of maturity he's just given that horse. Yes, uh, he's been very, what will I say, capable all the way, very capable. And he's with me now about four years, I suppose, or maybe longer. But from when he came, he was interested, and he's still interested, and I hope he stays that way. He's doing his leaving. Yes, yeah. he's leaving yeah. cert this year. Yes, yeah. Yes. Yes. And Brian and Claire were just singing your praises of how you know you you've looked after their son and, and developed him. What what was it you saw in him? Well, I, I, it gives me pleasure to help any juniors from when I started. We had a lot of nice jockeys: Nicky D, Dennis Coakley, you name it. I forget them. Niall Hulan now, uh, and they all learned a bit and I hope they continue. So. I just saw Niall congratulating John. Did you? Yeah, yes, yeah, yeah. Clearly very, very, very pleased it's for him. It's a lovely game, and it was really proven yesterday with the reception on East Oakley Cross, yes. that everybody to a man was behind Henry and the outfit. I can tell you that what happens in life, that you can have ups and downs, can't you? You can. Yeah, and John Gleeson is an only son like that. And I'm sure Henry's son would have gone the same way had he been lucky. It's, it's, it's wonderful at this part of my life. My brother trained Shula Wright to win the... The stairs hurdle. 93. Yes. So that was a big thrill then. I wasn't here that day, but we all worked together all the years. So it's ripened now. <laughs> and it's the family element that makes it extra special, doesn't, doesn't it? it? Doesn't it, yeah, yeah. Uh, anyway, it's great. And from an early stage, did you see the talent in the horse well, as well? He, was always, he always seemed to do things easy. We don't over-ask them at all. And the first day he ran in Tipperary, we were running him with all the allowances to make it easy. 
and he had an easy race and as a result I think he probably improved from there. And you've been pleased with him since the Dublin Racing Festival? Very, yeah. He's probably improved. I thought he had improved since. Yeah. And how did you help young John prepare for this race? Well, John works hard himself. He has some fitness gadgets, machines, <laughs> and stuff. he cycles, he runs, and he's prepared to work as well. You know, and, so. and did he watch past videos? Did you, did you, did you give him any uh, advice? He's good to do that himself, but we had a good talk about how he'd ride the race, and we thought that we'd follow Patrick, and Patrick would be a good judge. So that helped. And were you pleased with, what, with how he executed the tactics? Very the much, discussed? very much, very much. And the horse didn't have an abusive race, which is important too very much so. for the future. Absolutely, for his development. Uh, yeah, for the horses and the rider. And I hope he stays kind to the horses. I'm sure he will. And a word for J.P. McManus as well in keeping John on the horse. Wasn't it nice, yeah, yeah because he could have had any professional. But anyway, that's the way it worked out. It's just added to the story. It's, it's just such a beautiful story, and it's a lovely way to end this day. It's lovely to talk to you. Many Thank congratulations, you John. Appreciate it. Thank Everything. You. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Another Irish bred Cheltenham Festival winner. Contact Irish Thoroughbred Marketing to find yours. So with that, we reach the halfway point of the Cheltenham Festival. Two days down, two to go. Some outstanding performances on day uh, two. Embarre Basse announcing himself as a new star. Five to two, the winner of the Ballymore. The real whacker, extraordinary story to win the Brown Advisory. Langadan, finally his day in the handicap, the Coral Cup. Energumen, back-to-back -back wins in the champion chase, the big one. Uh, Delta Work, back-to-back -back wins in the cross-country. Mascada, the biggest prize winner of the day in the Johnny Henderson uh, Grand Annual. And a dream to share, a family dream lived out in the champion bumper. And at the end of day two, Paul Townend headed the jockey's title uh, with three winners, two seconds, zero thirds. One clear of Michael O'Sullivan, the star of day one, and a whole host of jockeys uh, with a winner apiece. What about the trainers? A predictable name at the very top of the, the standings. Uh, Willie Mullins with four winners, five seconds, six thirds. And Gordon Elliott and Henry de Bromhead as Irish compatriots with two apiece, uh, with lots to play for in the final two days. And the all-important Presbury Cup. Four for Great Britain and ten for Ireland. It was 5-2 across both days with 14 races still to go. Watch live racing now on RacingTV.com.